Hey guys, what's going on? It's Tony from Lone Wolf Paintball, and today I'm here with Devin from Die, and we're gonna do a quick history of Die. How did it come about? So without further ado, this is Devin, and I wanna ask going? you, how did you first get into paintball? I first got into paintball was in uh, seventh grade, and my friend said, I'm having a birthday party. We're gonna go play paintball. We went and did that, played for the day. I I had a great time. I was super scared the first game. Like I didn't even. As always. I stood in the back, and the ref actually like stopped the game and like came over and said, "Hey, kid, like <laughs> you're out." Like you know. And I was like, I was just so terrified. After that, I shot. I got shot walking off the field, and then I was like, "Wait, this isn't so bad." And then started playing. Next thing you know, the next weekend we're all at the paintball store buying guns and getting into it. So like basically, you were hooked and addicted like right away. Pretty much, yeah. So you just had a lot of, at first you were nervous, scared, and then you're like, wow, this is actually a lot of fun. Once I got shot and I got I got over the fear of it, yes. I was like, wait a second, this is actually pretty cool. And you start shooting people and you're like, wait, this is fun. I can do you this. You know, I like yeah. shooting people, like, yeah, let's do this. And then, yeah, it's kind of one thing after the other. But, so uh, then, so okay, you got hooked and uh, did you play for any teams or? Uh, yeah, I did play for a couple teams. Uh, me and my buddies, we started a three-man team. We played uh, the, the Best in the West series. It was a series that Aaron Carter did. And, San Diego and uh, played at, uh, yeah, we won our first tournament. We got uh, JT Purple JT Flex Ice Mass. Oh, those are the thing. It was like those the, are hotness now, though. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, people are looking for those those eyes masks, you know? Yeah, that was it. And then uh, did the whole thing and I played tournament paintball and then kind of progressed through there and, you know, started to, uh, you know, eventually get into a, working at a store, you know, playing tournaments, doing all that. So, I mean, just it did kind of evolved off. one thing to another. How did you first get with Die? So I was uh, I was playing with a lot of guys that uh, worked at Die previously. I was working at a store, and one of the downsides of working in a paintball store is your busy days are Saturday, Sunday. So I was always trying to work the store hours in the afternoon so I could play in the mornings and just do everything. And I was like, man, I really want to get weekends off. They're like, oh, they're hiring to die. And I was like, oh, can I get a job? And so I started, uh, I applied and I started to work. They're like, you want to move from the store over here and, and start building guns? And I was like, absolutely. So nice. I uh, started working at die and my first job at die was uh, building DM6 guns and putting Loctite on set screws and screwing <laughs> them in that way. And then eye wires and solenoids and doing all that. So, so speaking of the DM6, how did, obviously, cause that was DM6, 2006, whatever. Yeah. How did Die come to fruition? Like, how did Die come about? Uh, Dave, uh, Dave Youngblood. Uh, he started making barrels in uh, with Aaron Carter. Um, but Dave, Dave was uh, he's real big on Carter, as in the Die Carter pump. Yeah, I mean, there was a, a about that, but it all started from the barrel. Like, okay. so Dave was he was making a stainless steel barrel that just shot great. He went to all the events. Everybody saw him shooting the barrel. He started selling them to different people. Everybody was like, "Hey, I want these." So it was like, all right, cool. So I started making them and decided to do a big batch of barrels and sell them off. And they sold quick. And just one thing after the other, you know, we kind of grew from a barrel. So company. a barrel. So you just yeah. started making barrels and it just grew from there. Yeah, Dave what started about, making barrels by hand. What about in the sticky the grips? Everyone wants to know. What about the sticky yeah, grips? Yeah, sticky grips. The forty-five sticky grips. Everybody had to have those on their guns. Yes. Whatever, yeah. And then that was definitely uh, that was definitely a big product for us as well. Um, I mean, even to this day, you still find some guys that have those older guns or guys that are looking for those sticky grips because you can't find them anymore. If they're classic, and obviously the barrels, I mean, still the, the guy, the viewers these days know all about the dye ultralights, the boom sticks, the carbon fiber stuff. I mean, so it's really just started out as a, a, a barrel company. A barrel right? company. The stainless steel boom stick barrels where it all started from. Uh, so I know that you worked, didn't you work for Dai in, in Taiwan for a bit or? Yeah, I uh, actually, I moved, worked in Taiwan for about seven and a half years. Yeah. So Dai is uh, obviously truly international. So yeah, we've got uh, we've got an office in in Taiwan. We've got Dai Asia. It's in Taichung, Taiwan, and then we've also got an office in Germany, Dai Europe. Um, we have in in Dai Asia. We have our we have a lot of our machines that we uh, moved over from from the U.S. So we do all the gun and milling the guns, doing the barrels. Um, we also have our team over that does all the assembly. We do goggles, and then from there we distribute to you know the U.S. and to Europe. And we've got a we've got a great team that has been with the company for many years. Many so years. So it's been uh, it's been a long uh, it's been a long standing company since. What would you say when he started it, making barrels back in uh, ninety four? Back in nineteen ninety four. So Dai has been obviously an, an innovator, a leader in in the in the paintball market. I mean. 
So started out on, on barrels and sticky grips, huh? Yeah. So for the guys out there that don't know how it how it came to be, I mean, this yeah, is it. we started. Yeah, started with making barrels, and then go from there. And you know, it, the one thing is, is uh, it's a, a company that's passionate about making good products, right? And then it all it always was like, well, we're going to use these. This is what we want to use. So other people are going to like it too. And it's like just kind of matured and, and grew from there. Because yeah. it all started because you know the barrel thing, like. Dave wanted to have a good barrel. He wanted to have a better barrel, so he made the barrel that's going to shoot good for his gun. And then everybody kind of started to uh, go from there. And he saw just, that the barrel sales were going kind of well, and said, yeah. "Hey, I can kind of make." Okay, before I close this out. So at the time, though, at the time, Dave was actually uh, working at JT as a sales rep. Okay. Yeah, okay. Under with you know because that's where and making barrels on the side. Yeah, he was making yeah. barrels there. You know okay. his you know uh, his wife now Rhonda Rhonda Dehan, who's Rhonda Gregory. And her her father John Gregory and Rita they're the owners of JT. Okay. You know, so it's all kind of a, a big family. Yeah. You know? Okay. So it all stemmed kind of like from the JT and just moved into. Well, yeah. I mean, well, because originally, right, you had uh, Dave working for JT, and you know he's close with the family yeah. and everything like that. But then you started making products there and doing the barrels, and then you know next thing you know, you've had a, a die barrel was in the JT catalog, and then it, <laughs> you know after time, then it just started growing to where die you know was its own company and had to separate itself and, and go on from there. I was gonna say earlier before I close this out, other than like the barrels and stuff, was there like one like product that you would say that just kind of really opened things up at all for die like uh, their dm or like the sticky grips um were definitely a big thing the dm4 that was a big gun like when we bought the matrix because that was uh that was a, that was a big thing and then the evolution of the matrix to what it is now right i D mean dm where are we at now dm4 no we just released the m3s so now we're uh we're, we're moving ahead you know we're you got pressure sensors in your guns now you've yeah. got a big screen uh, Looks like a cell phone efficient. display. It's all color display screen and all that crazy stuff. So. Yep. You got a big one inch display there. You're, you're not going to miss anything. No, you won't. <laughs> well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe to our channel. And that was just like a, a brief overall history of die precision as we know it. So thank you very much, Devin. Thanks, Thanks for the quick history. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.